In this video, I'm going to show you how to create incredible animated videos using Midjourney's video generator. And stay tuned to see my fun animated short later on. I'll also show you a unique way on using your own voice to create sound effects. And how to take your videos to the next level with a groundbreaking upscaler. Okay, let's get into it. When Midjourney video got announced, I was a little bit skeptical as I thought it would just be another generic video generator. But when I started using it, I was very surprised. So let's see why it's so good. Now jumping over to Midjourney, I'm on the videos page. And as you can see, there are tons of videos for inspiration. What blows me away with Midjourney is how it stays consistent with the style throughout the video. So I generated this anime style image. The moment of recording, we have low and high motion in auto. So with auto, it will look at the image and animate it in a way that it feels like is appropriate for it. Otherwise with manual, you get to type in what you want to happen. For this example, I just chose auto high motion and I'm really impressed with the video. Now the great thing about Midjourney is that you can extend it up to four times. So at the end, you get a 20 second video. So I'll play back and you'll be able to see just how seamless the extensions are. Okay, so here is the extension, but you cannot notice it at all. And here is the other extension. And finally, we're going into the last extension. And in this last one, I did add a prompt of the motorbike explodes. And here's another version of extensions. So I've got this old man sitting on a bench and then I prompted it for the man to start flying. And then as you can see, these extra extensions just keep the man floating upwards and it all stays very consistent. And in this video, I extended it three times, but I changed the prompt for each extension. So for this first extension, I said he holds out his hand and creates a fireball and it does an excellent job at following the prompt. Then in the next extension, I said he claps his hands together, extinguishing the flame. So we have him making the flame and then he extinguishes the flame, just like I said in the prompt. And for the third extension, I said he spins around and points to the camera, smiling. So we have the flame, he extinguishes it, and then he spins around and points at the camera, smiling. So it followed the prompt perfectly. This is awesome as it allows you a lot more flexibility in your animations and it allows you to create longer seamless videos. So as you've seen, Midjourney is incredible at staying consistent with styles. I've actually created another video with 60 of my favorite Midjourney styles. So I've left a link to that down below. I've also compiled all of those styles in that video into a PDF. So you can copy them and use them in Midjourney and the link to that is also down below. These are just really good for inspiration and finding new visual styles for your next project. Now I'm going to look into creating my character and story. It's easy enough to create your character within Midjourney. For inspiration, sometimes I just go into the search bar and write in character, and then you can see all of the examples people have made down below. And one might spark your interest. And if it does, just click on the T and it will add the prompt up into the prompt box. And then you can generate your own character in that similar style. It's easy enough to just type into the prompt box what kind of character you want. Or you can use programs like ChatGPT to write you a detailed character prompt to use in Midjourney. So I've been having a play around and this is the character that I'm going to use. And for my story, I've kept it incredibly simple. So in the story, he goes into his dreamland in which he is a medieval knight and he gets to fly a dragon. So how do I create my character in these different scenarios? Well, one way you could do it is using the Omni Reference tool. So you can just drag in your character image. So with Omni Reference, it will look at your character and create images without changing the character's look. So I thought I would do a test. I've used the image of my character with the same prompt of him wearing armor standing outside of a castle, but I've tried three different Omni Strength numbers. And I actually prefer the images with the higher Omni Strength. So definitely play around with these settings until you get the right look. Midjourney is great for creating your images, but one of my favorite ways with creating consistency is using Flux Context. You can use Flux Context on loads of different websites, but I usually use either Replicate or Foul AI. I'll leave the links to those down below. And the good thing is it is pretty cheap per image as this model I'm using is only four cents per image. 
So all you have to do is drag in your image. And just like in mid journey, you just write what you want to change. So I'll do the same prompt from before with he is in knight's armor standing outside a castle. And it's generated this awesome looking image. As you can see, it's got a very similar pose, but you can change that within the prompt. I find a good method with using flux context is to always use a base image of the visual style of your story. So for example, if I'm creating pictures of him as a knight, I will use the image of him in the armor so that the armor stays consistent within each image I create. And for this example here, I've created him flying a dragon in the sky. So for all of the dragon scenes, I will use this image of the character on the dragon so that it knows what the dragon looks like and what the character looks like and will keep them consistent throughout all of those scenes. Hopefully that's not too confusing. I just find it's a really good method to have a base image for your different scenes. Make sure to put whatever changes you want into your prompt. So if you want to change their expressions or whatever actions the characters are doing. Once you're happy with all of your images for your animation, take them into mid journey and turn them into videos. Just make sure to put into the prompt what you want to happen. So in this example here, I've uploaded the image of Dave drinking in the tavern and I used a very simple prompt for this one. I just put in drinks and I used manual low motion for this one. And I'm really happy with the results. I like the additional bits of foam coming off the beer and I think it just has a nice professional look to it. And in this image here, I put the prompt of close up tracking shot flying extremely fast through the clouds. And for this one, I used manual high motion and the result looks incredible. It's a really dynamic action shot of them flying through the clouds. And as you can see, I've done an extension on this one, so it's a bit longer. And once you're happy with all of your shots, you can take them into your editor of choice and edit them together. A really good option is CapCut's free video editor. I've actually created a background track using Udio, but you can use other websites like Refusion, which has some free options, and Suno as well. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Are you enjoying the video? If so, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel. That would be awesome. Okay, back to the video. And then for voiceover work, I use Eleven Labs. And with their new V3 model, you can get some incredible results. So I've just put a test sentence here and you can choose from a bunch of different voices here. I've selected the V3 model. So when you click on the enhance button, it will look at your text and add in audio tags. So for this one, you can see it's added in a panicked for the woe and then shouting for the rest of the narration. So let's have a listen what it sounds like. Whoa, settle down. We're going too fast. Whoa, settle down. We're going too fast. That <laughs> sounded pretty good. It's added in a lot of emotion to the voice. You can always edit these to how you want it to sound. And remember, you can use things like voice changer so I can use my own voice and then change it after the fact. And another great thing I do for my videos is using the sound effects. So you just write in whatever sound effect you want and it will generate a few different versions. So I've put dragon flying fast through the sky and you can change your duration there. And let's see what it sounds like. I guess it's kind of a hard sound to make, but you can definitely hear like wings flapping in the wind. And in this one, I've put sword hit on wood as I want to use it with this video of the character hitting a wooden dummy. Which sounds pretty good. And another really cool way you can make sound effects is using Adobe Firefly's generate sound effects tool. So with this, you can upload audio and then describe it how you want it to sound. So as an example, I've got this video of the character hitting the sword with a hammer and I want to create a sound effect as the hammer comes into contact. And this is where the Adobe sound tool will really be helpful as I can watch back the video and then create the sounds as they happen. So let's do a test. I'll try to replicate a sound as the action is happening in the video and then I'll ask Adobe to change it into a metal clanging kind of sound. So I've recorded that sound and I've put into the prompt hammer hitting metal. So let's have a listen to how it sounds. Okay, that sounds pretty good actually. 
So if I download this and put it on top of the video, it's a really cool way of timing the sound effects perfectly with your video. I've edited all of my Mid Journey videos together with some music, sound effects, and narration. So here it is. This is Dave. <laughs> he has quite the imagination. <laughs> Let's see what today's adventure is. I think I need to get some sweet armor. Okay, this is much better. He tried archery, even forged his own sword. He ate delicious food. <laughs> and he tried his first beer, which didn't go down too well. But what he really loved was flying with dragons. He became the best dragon rider in all of Dreamland, and it made him feel on top of the world. I am really happy with how that turned out. I didn't spend too much time on it, but I think it's a really good showcase of just how good Mid Journey videos are. And if you pair it with consistency image generators within Mid Journey or using generators like Flux Context, it really does help with making consistent stories. There were a couple of shots in that animation where I did some lip syncing work. There are loads of different lip syncing tools out there, but for this one, I used Kling AI's lip syncing feature. I'll leave a link for Kling down below. Now let's have a look at taking your Mid Journey videos to the next level. As you may have noticed, Mid Journey videos look incredible, but if you're watching them on a larger screen, they can look a bit fuzzy around the edges. And that's why I want to show you Topaz's latest creative upscaler called Astra. And from my experience, the results have been incredible. Topaz are known for their photo and video upscalers, but this new model allows you to do creative upscaling, which can really transform your low resolution videos. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. So if I move the slider, this is the original video. And as you can see, it's a good looking video, but it's lacking detail. But then if I move the slider across, just look how good this new version looks. It still looks like the original video, but it's added so much more detail and it's made it look a lot better in my opinion. And in this example here, we have this blue hairy monster and I thought it may struggle with the hairs on the monster. But as I move the slider across, look at how incredibly detailed it is now. I'm really amazed by this as it still maintains the characteristics from the original video, but just adds so much more detail and clarity to it. It's very, very impressive. And this is a great example of why it works so well with animated looking shots. As the original is just lacking a lot of detail, but then with the creative upscaler, it's night and day difference, but it still retains the characteristics from the original video. So to start off, you just drop in your video and I'm going to be testing this video of my character. Then once it's loaded up, it will give you some options on the left here. So we have a few options to play around with. We have precise and creative. So with precise mode, it will just add a lot more detail, but more resemble the original video. But then with creative mode on, it still adds a lot more detail, but takes some creative liberties on adding extra details to the shot. So I'm gonna test out a few different models with this one video, and then we can see the differences. So we have precise and creative modes here and you get to choose between speed and quality. So with speed, it will cost less and give you faster outputs. And with quality, it will cost a little bit more with a bit more quality. You can either choose 1080p or 4K resolution outputs. You can also change your frame rates up to 120 frames per second, and you can go up to eight times slow motion. So I'll export the same video, but with different settings and we can see the differences. So this first one is with the precise speed mode upscaled to 4K with the original 24 frames per second. And I am very happy with how that turned out. Just look at how much detail is added into the shot. It's gone from looking quite dreamlike and blurry to a really refined looking image. I think it looks really, really good. You can do side by side. And as you can see, it just looks a lot better. And for this next shot, it is the precise quality mode. So it's still retaining the look of the original, but with a bit more added quality. And to be honest, I think it looks very similar to the speed option. 
And here's a test, but just upscaling to 1080p. And while it's not 4K, I still think it is a big upgrade from the original image. And now this is the creative subtle version, which has been upscaled to 4K. And it looks incredible. As you can see, it's added some little details to the armor pieces here, like some little speckles and marks. And overall, I think it looks really solid. It looks more like a professional Pixar kind of animation. And here is the creative bold version. So with bold, it should add more details to the shot. And it definitely has added a bit more refinement. I think it looks really good. It does look a wee bit over sharpened in areas, but going from the original image, it looks insanely polished. And this is another test, but with changing the frame rate to 60 frames per second. And just look how smooth the animation looks compared to the original. It's pretty amazing how it has filled in those frames and it makes it look a lot smoother. And here is the two times slow motion version, which looks incredible. This obviously is perfect if you want to slow down your shots, plus you're getting a longer video out of it. So it's gone from five seconds to 10 seconds now. This could be really helpful if you want a slow motion cinematic scene. Now the problem is it isn't free, it is another subscription based model. Now the lowest plan is $39 a month and you get 400 credits. With these 400 credits, if you wanted to do a basic upscale on your five second mid journey videos, you'll be able to upscale about 55 videos. Or if you were to use the bold creative upscale, this will go down to about 25 videos which isn't that much, but I think it might be a good idea if you had all of your mid journey videos for a project finished and then you bring them into Astra and just do a basic upscale to make your final output look a bit more polished. Otherwise, Topaz do have other AI video upscalers you can check out. For creating videos in mid journey, I would highly recommend either the standard plan or the pro plan. The standard plan starts at $30 a month and they give you 15 hours of fast generations. This is a confusing metric as they don't tell you how many videos you can create, but from my research, you'll be able to create just over 100 videos on this plan. But if you have a lot of projects to work on, then the pro plan is a great option as you have 30 hours of fast generations. But the great thing is you get unlimited relaxed image and video generations. So you can create as many videos as you like. They will take a bit longer to generate, but I think it's definitely worth it. So we've reached the end of this video and I hope you can see just how powerful Mid Journey's video generator is. And it's only going to get better. If you have any tips or tricks on how to get the most out of it, then please comment down below. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. My name is Jack, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.